turns out that in some cases, resilience is hardwired, built right into our genetic code. There are things we do, like how we put on our socks, or stir our milk. Then there is who we are, like the color of our eyes, the shape of our face, or the laugh <laughs> that sounds like our mother. And now there is proof that resilience, that ability to bounce back, all my degrees, is sometimes hardwired. Wow. Part of our genetic blueprint. The students from Keller. Georgia State. Maureen Randall is moving into a new home after she and her daughter spent a year homeless. It was long and hard. Uh, we left our apartment, it got flooded. She is also Master's in Business Administration. Getting her doctorate. I'm currently working on my qualifying exam. Tradika Thornton's ex-boyfriend tried to set her on fire. He threw gas on me and I was screaming and I couldn't see because I had gas in my eyes. So I screamed, my sister-in-law kicked in the door and he ran. So the lighter he was flicking didn't catch. Through therapy, Thornton has recovered and is a plus size model. It shows that there's a genetic basis for why some people are able to bounce back from adverse events. Thornton and Randall were part of a study conducted of over 2,500 people in the Grady Trauma Project, which studies PTSD. 34% of participants had a genetic marker known as RS322931. People with this marker, I consider this a blessing, reported higher levels of positive emotions and spiritual well-being and greater purpose in life, despite personal difficulties. Positive emotion and purpose in life those are the building blocks of resilience. They're also the building blocks of psychological well-being. And initial findings suggested something else. The people carrying that marker had lower rate of cognitive decline in advanced age. This is how geneticist and neurologist Dr. Thomas Wingo, who researches early onset Alzheimer's disease, partnered with his wife, psychiatrist Dr. Aliza Wingo, who was studying resilience. The two work at Emory Brain Health Center and the Atlanta VA Medical Center. I always try to do something else to try to take me away from whatever sad or bad emotions I'm feeling. The Wingos and their collaborators found there is a genetic basis for resilience, that having purpose in life or positive emotions can lower your risk of dementia by up to 50%. They also lower the risk of heart attack, stroke, even depression. Not having the marker, we see some that are still you know, pretty high, does not mean you're not resilient. So the other 80% of the people might have another marker that make them resilient that we haven't found yet. Because it was a double-blind study, neither Randall and Thornton nor the Wingos know if they have the marker. But both are powerful examples of resiliency. I think I'm really strong, so I know I do have it. I know I have it in me. It's taught me that um, troubles don't last forever. And, you know, that if you keep a positive attitude, you know, things will eventually work out. Proof that your outlook on life I really love this. can change the outcome. There is no test available to the public to see if you're among the 15% who has the resilience gene. But remember, there's a good chance there are many more such genes yet to be discovered. In the meantime, there's no harm in living like we do have it.